star of the show. Good job, honey. Good evening, Patriots. Oh. Come on now, we traveled all the way from New York to be here tonight. I said, good evening, Patriots. I knew you could do it. My friends, it is a pleasure to be here tonight and I'm here really to remind you that America is an exceptional country. It's an exceptional country where anyone can succeed. Doesn't matter what your race is, how much family money you have, but it's about hard work and perseverance. And I am blessed to be able to travel the country to deliver my message of freedom and liberty and how I got involved in public policy coming from a Democrat household. And yes, I was a former Democrat, don't throw me out. <laughs> but I learned life lessons. And I know it's about freedom and personal responsibility. And I love meeting freedom-loving Americans because I know you love country and you will do anything for our country. And I have a question for you tonight. Uh, whatever happened to common sense and common decency in our country? The challenges that we're facing today are debt, national security, is absolute government gone wild. And what is on the headlines the last few weeks? I'm talking about toilets how men can go into women's bathrooms because they feel like it. It's public safety, women, children, that's the concern. But the progressives don't care. It's twisted. And speaking of twisted, last week, our president endorsed Hillary Clinton for president. Under an active FBI investigation. She, he got, she got his blessing. Really, his quote, I don't think there's ever been someone so qualified to hold this office. Yeah, I can't say that without laughing either. Because I'm thinking about him as he's saying it. Really? Well, $6 billion missing from the State Department under her watch as Secretary of State. Not a secretary in an office, but Secretary of State. Private email server, deleted emails, thousands of deleted emails. Didn't return classified information. Benghazi, those poor souls. The rise of ISIS, the Clinton Foundation. Yeah, I'm going to throw Bill in there, too, because I, I know he's done something lately. We just don't know about it yet. <laughs> it's a gross lack of accountability from our politicians. It's really a disgrace. I mean, if you're a parent trying to explain to your child, okay, yes, Hillary, she's under FBI investigation, but she's running for president, and there's nothing to see here. That's what they keep telling us. No, that's, this is wrong. This is wrong. And really to say we are living in uncertain times is a gross understatement. Tensions in the Middle East and concerns of terrorist attacks right here in our country. What happened in Florida, it's horrible tragedy. And we have a president who can't even say the words radical Islamic terrorists. Folks, our country is becoming more and more divided as well. What is this political correctness stuff? PC, don't look at me, don't touch me, you offended me. It's like me being in the back seat with my younger sister years ago. She's touching me, she's looking at me. I mean, it's, everyone is offended. Everyone, it's more and more divided, political correctness. I call it society soft. 
That's what we're seeing. And, and what's with these safe zones? People can't be criticized. People can't be told no. Somehow, some way, everything is offensive, sexist, racist. Michelle Obama, for example, she gave her final, thank goodness, <laughs> her final commencement address at the City College of New York. The first lady made a reference to slavery. It's a commencement address. Somehow she slipped slavery in there. She was speaking to nearly 4,000 graduates who want to hear about hope, inspiring messages, and you can do it, and you can be a success, and congratulations on all of your hard work. And she talks about slavery. Rather than talking about the freedoms and liberty that our Constitution provides for all Americans, she talks about waking up in the White House that was built by slaves. Yeah, well, that's my next speech. And despite living a privileged life, she carries a chip on her shoulder and sees everything through a racial lens. And don't forget, not that long ago, Michelle told us that finally in her adult life, she's proud of her country. And that's only after her husband was elected president of the United States. Well, maybe some of you don't know that much about me don't know who I am, but I want you to keep this thought in mind when you see or hear anything about Deneen Borelli. That unlike Michelle Obama, I have always been proud of my country. Always. Always, and I don't know about you, but I am darn tired, I almost cursed, wow. I am tired of the race card being played. I'm tired of it. Been hearing it since I was a little kid. And if I had believed that lie, that blacks need special treatment, treatment and are victims, I wouldn't be standing here today. And thank goodness, I came to my senses and realized that it's about the individual, not others, and not blaming others. It's you, the individual. And that's one of the reasons why I wrote my book, Blacklash, how Obama and the left are driving Americans to the government plantation. Because I talk about how I got to where I am today, and I talk about the different jobs and opportunities that I had to get me to where I am today by taking risks, leaving home at an early age in my 20s with no money to seek a career as a fashion model. That didn't work out, but it's okay, I tried. But like a lot of black individuals, they are really stuck in that echo chamber. They are stuck in that message, they're stuck in that world. And I'm talking about the message that's coming from the black community, the so-called leaders, politicians, black media outlets, some black ministers, and community activists. And that the misfortunes that are happening to you or from the black community, is, it's not your fault. It's, it's the white person's fault. You didn't do anything wrong. The victimization message. And over the years, I found out that this was a lie. But sadly, there are some who are still being lied to, and they still believe that lie. And I knew I didn't need special treatment. I used my God-given talents to get me to where I am today. I like to say I took the scenic route. <laughs> took the scenic route. 
But I am darn proud of that scenic route. There's no straight line in life. Life is a marathon. It's not instant. Things don't come instant. And since awakening from my political sleep, I've become a public policy activist for liberty. And I'm playing my role. I'm playing my role to talk about limited government and personal responsibility. Because I want to keep the doors of opportunities open for all Americans. And I use my story to promote liberty in the black community especially because they are continuously being lied to. And through my experiences, I recognize it's hard work. And that is my message, especially to our future generation. Through my efforts, I've come in contact with a lot of individuals who have helped me out along the way. But it is about the individual doing for themselves and working hard. Don't expect someone to just hand it to you. And in my book, Black Lash, I talk about my evolution from being a citizen on the sofa to on the front lines of liberty. And my story does resonate with others. And if you can just imagine being a black female conservative, I say I'm an American first, but a black female conservative and all the nonsense I put up with because people don't want to hear about freedom and liberty because that blows away the left's lie that blacks are victims. And I am called all kinds of names. Token, a traitor, Aunt Jemima, sellout, words I can't even say, and veiled threats. Someone should jump out and deal with me. My parents should be slapped. I got a, a really hot one the other day. I, I can't even tell you what it said, but just some really vile individuals out there hiding behind their keyboards and computers instead of debating me on the problems that are facing our country. The real pressure and drama for anyone who is a black conservative comes from those who are closest to them, families, friends, co-workers. And unfortunately, that's why some don't come out and really promote their views and their values and what they stand for. Me, I don't care. I'm going to sing the praises of liberty as long as I can. And yes, there are some family members. Yes. Yes, there are some family members. We don't go there. We don't talk politics. <laughs> Merry Christmas. See you next year. <laughs> but my friends, everyone has a role to play. And this is a call for Americans, for everyone to get involved. This is no longer a spectator sport. As Americans, we have the responsibility to use our individual voice to pressure representatives to act on our behalf. They need to be reminded that they work for us. Amen. I spent 20 years in corporate America sending emails and writing letters and reports. I had no idea I would be doing this. No idea. But God had another plan. And that's why it's so important for freedom-loving Americans to get involved. I urge you to think about what you can do. Don't just come to the meetings and events. Get your hands dirty, roll up your sleeves. What can you do? I do hope you will visit conservativereview.com because the first step is for you to be informed. There is a lot of wrong information out there please visit the website, conservativereview.com. That's where I work, chief political correspondent. You can check out my page, The Buzz, for my commentaries and articles. And Tom and I, we have a weekly podcast. We're together all the time and still smiling. She's expensive. Thank you. I like you. 
Important information and analysis, please visit the website. And you can also sign up for Levin TV for that one hour class of liberty every day. Yes, you can clap. So folks, being informed is one step, being active is another, and that is what Tom touched on a little bit. Please get involved, be active, and spread the word. Social media is critical, it's huge. I can't tell you how much support I have from people around the country. And I uh, have some medical doctors, for, for example, who are on Twitter. They have more followers than I do. And they are shooting out our information on a regular basis. Anyone can do it. Social media, day and night. Please check it out. Please check it out. Uh, folks, finally, I want to leave you with this message. That our country does not guarantee you success. But liberty guarantees you the opportunity to succeed. And I will stay on the front lines of liberty to keep the doors of opportunity open for all Americans. God bless you all, and God bless America.